Even for like a, a nerd, I was like a nerd of the nerds. Like, like I didn't hang, even hang out with other nerds. So, uh, you know, in 1983, probably is the first time I started programming. My family had an Apple II Plus. It was just basic stuff. I was actually kind of more interested in graphics than programming at that time, but the only way to do graphics was to kind of program it yourself. Like stupid little things like drawing a um, Bezier curve or a American flag with a program. In 1986, I was uh, lucky enough to have an Amiga 1000, which was a very, very exciting computer. It was like doing great graphics, great sound. Uh, you know, I like to play video games. I was a total nerd, so I would be inside playing video games. I also started programming it. Eventually, I started programming in C. Picked computer science in college after, you know, kind of giving up on engineering, just because I was good at programming compared to like, how well I was doing in other classes. I was struggling and uh, even things like solving circuits um, with differential equations. I got like a B and everybody else was getting A's. And then when I was programming algorithms, I was getting A's and everybody else was getting B's. So when did I fall in love with coding? I mean, probably I wouldn't say I really fell in love with coding until I fell in love with what I programmed. And that would have been in when I was in grad school. So I, I liked I liked programming just as like as a toy. It was fun to program. You know, the same way you have, you know, kids have fun playing with Legos, people have fun playing with electro uh, erector sets. I was always a fan of online games on BBSs and then on the internet there were some online games in the early days, uh, games like Empire, which was like a uh, kind of like a uh, strategy war game. I actually built, with that, I built a client that helped me win on, on Empire, that automated some tasks in Empire. It wasn't until I got to grad school where I actually made a real consumer product that people were actually using. And uh, that was like really, really rewarding. I just, you know, it made me so happy. You know, I launched this product and I had 500 people in my little game room playing games. It's like, it was all because of me, you know I mean? So it was, it was, it was really, really rewarding. So yeah, the, the software usually gets, well, let's start, the sell your soul contract is, um, yeah, you've got four years you work, and then yeah, depending on how good you are and how, you know, how successful your company is, you got either, you know, a million dollars, or you get, you know, a hundred million dollars, or in some cases you get billions of dollars for a few years work. You know, it's obviously very compelling for people, but the thing is you're not really done yet. Like you haven't really finished, like the internet still very much evolving and things still need to be improved and the people that you built the software for still need you there, right? In fact, their goodwill is why you got acquired, like if you got the billion dollar level or the hundred million dollar level. Typically like the intellectual property is that your source code is owned by, you know, the company now. They own it, they'll do whatever they want with it. If you're successful, they should be at least putting you in charge of the product at the company. And hopefully he still have the same passion, he still stays good, but um, you know, you get different results for different things. Um, sometimes things do do well when they get acquired. I mean, obviously YouTube did really well when it got acquired. You gotta keep programming, it's like not fun. You're dealing with customers who like, when you look at your emails, it's only, email, it's only emails from customers who hate you. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, it's, you gotta take it seriously, I mean. So yeah, I launched my, you know, I, I, I kind of always, I, I wouldn't call it a website. I called it a, you know, internet destination or whatever. It was a place where people could come and play games. Actually within six months of launching it, uh, Yahoo called up and wanted me to make it part of Yahoo. And this was my sellout moment. Like, I'll, you know, I'll be honest, like um, I, I would have loved to have stayed independent. I would have loved for Yahoo to have, helped me stay independent instead of, you know, insisting that I join Yahoo. At the end of the day, it's, you know, it's a kind of a Dickensian situation where you realize even then I was pretty overwhelmed having, you know, trying, I, I wanted, I still wanted to get my degree in grad school. Pretty overwhelming in those days, trying to keep a, you know, an internet destination like that, work like vibrant and not crashing and things like that. So in 1997, I launched this uh, in April. And I think by August 1997, uh, we had signed the contract with Yahoo. I was supposed to go there for three months, um, help them take it over, and then go back to grad school. But it was pretty clear to me 
uh, and them that I needed to stay at Yahoo um, after the three months was up. So I ran up for six and a half years at Yahoo until 2004. Yahoo had a model where non-technical people were in charge. So people who didn't even know how computers worked were making decisions on product and all sorts of things. People who, you know, somebody like me who was the technical founder of a product was expected to um, defer to business people or product or marketing people in product decisions. So that was probably the worst thing about Yahoo for me. And certainly looking, you know, in those days, it was across Moffett Field to Google. Actually, I don't know if Google had that HQ yet, but anyway, um, soon to be across Moffett Field to Google, they were treating the engineers well. If you're losing and nobody's listening to you when you want to help them win, I mean, it's, you basically got to leave. And honestly, I think that the worst thing for me was uh, I actually recruited somebody once who had an offer from Google and convinced them to take a job at Yahoo again. <laughs> And I realized I would never be able to ever do that ever again, like with a clean conscience. 